Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing really well. I catch you at a very busy time. Tomorrow you have a workshop? Yes, I do. And um, what do we have here behind you? Um, this painting here um, is not a recent piece, but it's a piece from um, a few years ago. I did a series called Cycle Series. And it's kind of based on life cycles in an abstract way. So this is one of the pieces that is left. Um, I probably made 10 or 15 of them. And uh, this is one I kept myself because uh, it'd been out at Art Rentals and now it's back. So I decided to put it up for now anyway. And you also have little ones. Are yeah. Together and These three are done um, on a primal series that I did and it's got nothing to do with the cycle series. Um, again, it was a series that these are sort of leftover paintings from um, shows that I've done and I did a bunch of, um, they're, they're almost like primitive animal shapes in it and that's what I was trying to capture. Um, and so they're very loose and abstract and um, so that's, those are leftovers from that series. How did you get into encaustic? Um, I got into encaustic um, about nine years ago and it was, um, I saw, I, I was working at an art store and I opened a book up in encaustic and I saw a painting in it and I, I said, that's what I have to do because I love the piece that I saw and um, so then I said, okay, that's it. I, this is the kind of work I want to do and I couldn't get it with acrylics. I wasn't getting the quality that I was looking for in acrylics. So, um, I had a summer, um, I had actually had a treatment in the summer, so I had some time off and I just went and or started ordering all the supplies. So that was nine years ago before they started selling it in art stores. And I started on my patio making all my own paints. I started with making medium and then I started making all the colors and that's where I started painting. And I spent one summer, uh, I think two summers painting only in the summer on the patio. And then I asked my husband, I said, look it, I just love this medium. It suits me. And he said, okay. Well, I said, can we make this into a studio? It was a, actually used to be a games room, the studio that you're going to see in a little while. So he changed it up and he uh, put a hood in it and he made it an encaustic studio for me. So I've been painting that ever since. And there's more work on the wall, but I'm going to fill yeah. it. Okay, so the, again, these are still part of the cycle series. Um, and these are kind of the, uh, yeah, these are made together at the same time. And I, I kind of feel like it just has, there's like history in it. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do in my abstract way is, I'm not trying to like tell you anything, but at the same time, I'm putting paper that you have to, you really can't read it. You can see that there's sort of a history behind it, but it's not that legible. So I find that it's kind of just like life just goes on and it and the circles sort of represent that. So you've been doing encaustic for how many years now? Nine. Nine, Nine years. Nine. So yeah, this is a little piece I just did recently and it's kind of has a bit of a landscape feel to it. My husband really likes it, so I think it's one that he wants to keep here. Um, he likes a little bit more representational art, so every once in a while I bend to that. So um, it's got like the little tree branches in it, so you can actually see that there's kind of a, a landscape feel to it. That's probably as close to realism as I get, so. Um, and uh, there's another one. Yeah, um, right behind, right behind you here. This is these are more recent pieces that I've been working on, and now I'm getting uh, like I, I've always loved the quality of line, and and so there's a lot of drawing in here, and that's I, my art education actually started in drawing. So I always feel like I want to draw into my pieces, and that's kind of how come I love encaustic because. I get the ability to draw into it as well. It's very, it's a hard surface, so you can really get, you can make some drawings that go underneath it and you can bury it or leave them exposed, whatever uh, suits you. So that's why I, um, anyway, these are getting more abstract, more painterly. I just, you know, um, try to work spontaneously and not put too much thought into it. I'm trying to work in the subconscious. I find that if I get too, if I start sitting and looking at it too much or, or uh, hesitating too much, I, I change, it, the thinking changes and that's, 
not whatever I want. I want it to be abstract. I want it to be from my subconscious. I don't want to, I, I, there is no absolute uh, influence or description that I can say to it. It's just kind of me responding to the surface. One of my friends who's an artist told me I'm all about the surface. He's like, you're all about the surface. Your work is about the surface. And, and, and that makes sense because it's not, it's not like, oh, I live in this beautiful setting. And, oh, is your art about your environment? It's so beautiful. No, it's about everything. It's about, it's about everything and nothing at the same time. So uh, that's how I feel. Art, really, when people start to say, oh, it's, this is my, I, I kind of think, no, you really should just be working from, Art's about everything and nothing. So why even try to say that it's specifically this or that? And this actually gives us freedom to attach our own emotions yeah. to it and our own values or Absolutely. feelings, sensations, right. just because you don't give a, a very straightforward right. definition. I don't want to tell somebody that this is what you have to think. One of, that's one of the reasons I have a very hard time making titles for my work. Because I find as soon as you title it, you're telling the viewer what to see. And I don't want to tell the viewer what to see. I want them to see what they, they see themselves. So I usually don't title them very specifically. I always title them in series. Like um, my last series that I did um, was called Vanishing Lines series. So it left it wide open. I didn't pinhole anybody into believing that it was this or that. And I called it Vanishing Line Series, and there was 26 of them. So it was 20, you know, one, two, three, four, it, it, continuing that way. Because I really want, it's, it is, it's purely an emotional response uh, for the viewer. It's, you're, you're going to like it or not. And, and I'm okay with that. I have people who love my work, and I have people who just don't like it at all. And that's fine, because it's, it's really, I'm happy with the people that love it because I'm happy that they see what I see and that's really it. It's that human connection that they, they see what I see and I feel good about that. And then when people walk by and don't see anything, well that's fine too because it's not for everybody and nobody's going to, there's going to be artists that, you know, somebody loves this and I, sh I, I teach art classes to uh, abstract people and yesterday I taught and I say to them, I'm putting art in here that I don't even like to show you because I know that some of you might like this and I don't want it just to be my taste and my, my, the way that I see art. So I put in art just to see the response that people give and I find that it's interesting how one person would be so in love with something and then another person completely like offended by it. Well, that might be also uh, because of the experience exactly it. so it's not really about you no it's media. not it's completely absolutely and that's why I find that I find people I mean yes and and there's a growing process and I always say that like what I like five years ago maybe completely out I'm always changing as well just like my students are always changing I say you you'll paint a painting now and you may not like it in a few years you may have grown from that so it just you know you like it now that's great uh, some pieces you like forever and some pieces you don't some pieces I go mmm geez I'm over it <laughs> you know and I might get over this one too so right now I love it because it's new but maybe I'll get over it maybe I'll be like in a few years going oh I'm gonna paint that over <laughs> oh that's because of evolving yeah evolving that's what everybody's always evolving yeah so these are uh, uh, this section here are new pieces these are pieces that I have done recently and you can see that uh, there's a very similar palette and again there's a um, that's another thing that I find is for me I'm like I'm about certain colors and right now I'm like really exploring gray I love the different values of gray the different uh, you know the hues of gray that you can get there's the greeny gray the bluey gray um, there's a lot of different grays that you can see um, in the painting. So what are your emotions around gray? Well, actually, I think it's a beautiful color. Like, for me, I... I well, because it's I, actually a combination of colors. Yes, and you know what it is about gray? I'll turn that later. Um, the, the thing about gray is that when you use gray, and then you add some color, 
that color really sinks. And that's one of the beauties of gray, I find. Or I was using a lot of off whites and whites before, but I mean, that red corner is bright and it's because of all the gray around it. And just like this green line here might be more poppy than it would if it was under uh, a bunch of color. So I do find that gray is a great, uh, new. it's a neutral color that makes colors sing. So that's one of my reasons for exploring gray, but I've always loved the neutral tones. And that's why when I teach, I'm always trying to bring some color to the, you know, because I realize that, you know, a really bright red painting isn't gonna come from me. So I have to kind of go, oh, what would they like? Like, let's try some color paintings because I'm more attracted to the neutrals and the, I don't know, there's sort of a, also a, a kind of calming feeling, I guess, when I, I find that gray gives you because that. Because it's very soft. Yeah, it gives you that kind of, uh, calm feeling yet I'm still using gestural marks so uh, at the same time as having um, a calmer color I'm using these brush strokes like this one in kind of a gestural sense like like the Asian artists used to use when they're painting with their it's kind of just added and and uh, that that's the part that um, yeah so the gray has the calming so Somebody at, at, at one of my art shows, an outdoor show that I did, said that my work was calm and active at the same time. That, and that was kind of nice to hear. So here's, here's my studio space. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> here's my studio space. Uh, these are the pieces that I'm working on right now. And uh, today I'm going to work on a little bit on these pieces. This one in particular, I don't actually know what to do with that yet. I, I feel like I need to put something up at the top. And in this piece here, I like the piece and it has that landscape quality again. And I, this time I use more it, like lighter grays and light blues and things like that. But there's a spot, there's this piece is not even attached yet. Because uh, in my eye, I'm saying to myself, geez, I, it's almost there, but I need something I need something else. So what I do sometimes when I'm almost completed a piece is just start to put pieces of paper down and see what it is that that piece needs and then attach it. Then what I'll do is I'll paint it with that uh, encaustic. I won't actually use paper on that. At this level, I'd actually use, um, I'll, I'll use the paintbrush. So I might just make a shape and paint it there. But um, yeah, so anyway, it's, it's, it's always, um, um, painting abstract for me is like the only way I can paint because I'm just so invested in the surface at the time that I'm working. I'm really just like nothing else matters at the moment I'm painting. All thoughts of bills or housework, everything is gone when I'm painting. Every problem that I've ever had is gone while I'm painting. It's just kind of a place of of just like all I'm thinking about is that surface and how to solve that surface and how to make that rectangle piece of wood work and that's that's why I paint that's the only reason I paint is because I have to and these works are going to be uh, showed at uh, I have cube, I have gallery. a few uh, cube gallery is one gallery I have I have cube gallery then I have a gallery uh, in Elmont as well and then the uh, um, so I have a couple of places that I show uh, I'm not sure where these pieces I have a, a little gallery in Toronto as well so I'm not really sure where these pieces are going to go because I'm not working towards any show right now nobody's offered me a show um, so um, I'm not really sure the only show I have coming up right now is that Christmas shows so there are small pieces that I'm entering into the Christmas shows um, and actually, I could show those pieces if you like. They're in a box. They're not, I have to just finish the sides, but I could show you the pieces that I'm working on. Sure. If you like, it's yes. in the back in the other room where we were. Okay. Um. So there's actually four of them. There's another one right here. And, and where is this Christmas show? Uh, at the Cube Gallery. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this, oh no, that's not one of them. So. Anyway, there's four pieces for it. Because um, 
basic oh here's the other one so there's four of them and they've all based on the same again it has a kind of, there is sort of that nature feel because i do have this sort of representational tree but it's also um um I have this little image that I did in, it's a print, I'm, I'm a printmaker as well, so um, I did a print uh, and um, I use it, uh, some of them are framed in, a, in another medium, but the ones that aren't, uh, that I don't feel are, are successful prints, I use them in my encaustic because it's such a great medium for collaging and you just have to iron it in and then you can paint over it. So it's kind of like this little figurative shape and again, it's got that drawing quality. So that's where um, I feel like I, I love to make marks. And I did this little drawing and I really liked it and I printed it over and over and over again. And then I decided to use it, use it in my painting. Oh, Sue, thank you so much. Oh, thank you.